A video presentation to be premiered at the Regional Expert Meeting for Rural Development in celebration of Professor Dr. Boy Ng Pakon's centenary, Revitalizing Rural Development to Eradicate Poverty in Asia. The Quality of Life of a Southeast Asian A Chronicle of Hope from Womb to Tomb is one of Professor Dr. Boy Ng Pa Gon's most appreciated and characteristic writings. Often reprinted, it has captivated several generations of readers up to the present day. It has inspired a new approach to economic and social rights and a welfare system still in use today in Thailand. It expresses a common human wish to live simply and with dignity. Benefiting from social security as a basic aspect of human rights. In 1916, Boy Ng Pakon was born in Bangkok to a modest family of Chinese immigrants. Among the first group of students to enroll at the newly founded Thammasat University, he earned a government scholarship after graduation to study at the London School of Economics and Political Science. After his return to the kingdom, he started work on development issues. Among Dr. Boy's many achievements and responsibilities, he served as governor of the Bank of Thailand and rector of Thammasat University. He was also dean of the Faculty of Economics founder of the TU Graduate Volunteer Project and a pioneer in rural development. After the tragic events of October 1976, Dr. Boy's life was threatened and he was forced to flee his homeland. He lived in the United Kingdom until his death. In 1965, Dr. Boy was presented with the Ramon Magsaysay Award for government service marked by integrity in governance, courageous service to the people, and pragmatic idealism within a democratic society. On his centenary in 2016, he was named by UNESCO as a key world figure. Whatever duties Dr. Boy accepted, he always believed in social equality and freedom. He proposed the ethos of Santi, peace, Pracha, people's rule and democracy, and Dharma, righteousness and justice, as the national basis for peaceful development in all parts of society. Despite working in the Thai bureaucratic establishment, he maintained his moral independence, intellectual creativity, and sense of social responsibility for growing the nation's economy and rural development. He once observed, Very soon I will be 60 years old, but deficiencies remain in our economic system. I have not yet succeeded in raising the standard of living for many Thai people, especially those dwelling in impoverished rural areas. Despite the courageous efforts by Dr. Boy, the World Hunger Education Service reports that today, 70% of all malnourished children in the world live in Asia. 512 million adults and children in Asia consume too few calories, which accounts for over 12% of the total population of Asia. The subcontinent of Asia, including India and Bangladesh, has the highest rates, 16% of malnutrition and the most numbers of the hungry in Asia. In Asia, 17% of females and 13% of males are underweight on average. Asia has always had more hungry people and more malnourished children than Africa, in large part because Asia has so many more people. In Thailand, it is estimated that 8.5% of the population struggles with hunger, 
largely in southern and northern rural areas. Despite Thailand's economic prosperity and many rich families, it also has over 30 million people, mainly in farm areas, living on less than $5 US per day. Still, it has one of the lowest poverty rates in the ASEAN community, with fewer than 300,000 people living below the poverty line, or 1.25 US dollar per day. Social mobility in Thailand is hampered by separate classes of rich corporate owners, urban business employees, and impoverished farmers, as well as urban poor in shanty towns. Only 4.1 of Thailand's GDP is spent on healthcare, according to 2014 statistics, which is a higher percentage than in some other ASEAN countries, but much lower than elsewhere in Asia. Japan, for example, spends 10.2% of its natural income on healthcare. South Korea spends 7.4%. According to the ASEAN Statistical Yearbook 2015, the average life expectancy for a baby born in Thailand in 2014 was 74.4, more than in some ASEAN countries, but considerably less in Singapore or Brunei Darussalam. Major causes of death in Thailand remains malaria, especially in rural areas, tuberculosis and heart disease. The longer it takes for these problems to be resolved, the more people will suffer. This is why we are meeting today, to share knowledge and exchange opinions. We will brainstorm to create development proposals while revising strategies for problem solving together. Following in the tradition of Professor Dr. Boy Ng Pa Gon. We work in the hopes that in future decades, the quality of life of Asian people and the global population will improve and shared sustainable prosperity will be more widespread in the near future.